Hey guys, I've got another distribution review for you today. Today we're going to be taking a look at Elementary OS. So, I uh, downloaded the image that was released earlier this year uh, towards the late end of April. And uh, I've been playing around with it on my Triton laptop, which I got from Entroware uh, for over a week now. Um, also, by the way, the Triton is a great little laptop from Entroware if you're looking for an entry-level uh, machine. Just the build quality is really nice on it, and it's uh, they come built designed to run Linux, of course. They're not a sponsor, but I did buy one for the purpose of this uh, review series, and it's certainly money well spent, I've got to say that. So... Uh, one caveat before I carry on with this review is that I'm going to be using screenshots rather than screen cap footage. Uh, OBS and Simple Screen Recorder, the two pieces of screen cap software that I use on distributions when I do these reviews, uh, isn't actually available in the App Center. So um, rather than faff around with that, I want to get this video out the door quite quickly. I've been using this distribution for over a week now and I want to get onto something uh, something new. So, um, so I'm just going to use some screen caps to demonstrate what I'm saying. But feel free to close this tab and just you know browse the net or what have you um, because this is going to be a mostly uh, mostly me describing my user experience rather than demonstrating features and whatnot. So that's going to be one of these kinds of reviews. So um, first off the bat as well um, I feel a little bit mismatched with this distribution. I feel that this is a distribution that was made for users who do not fit my demographic. I feel that Elementary OS is built for people who are moving across from Windows and Mac. Uh, it certainly looks a lot more in terms of, it looks similar to the, the Mac OS layout, more so than I think any other distribution that I have reviewed. So it does, you know, look like it's taking a lot of direct inspiration from Mac. And I do believe on the website they, they have taken some, some UI cues from it as well. So, and I believe I've also heard that the majority of their new users are coming in from Windows and Mac. So they're not converting Linux users from one distribution over to, to here. They're actually um, bringing new people in, which is, of course, always um, worth noting. So... Uh, this is based on the latest long-term support version of Ubuntu, which I believe is 16.04. Although I could have sworn there was like at least simple screen recorder in the repositories of that, but um, I uh, guess I, I'm mistaken or elementary have taken it out for some reason. Um, but one thing I have noticed, and at the time of recording this, this is this is... I don't know, approximately midway through a, the life cycle of a long-term support release. And... Even now, like the software is getting a little bit old and ropey in the latest Ubuntu LTS. Now, if I was running a server, it wouldn't be much of an issue. But if I, uh, you know, want to have vaguely up-to-date software, the six monthly release cycle uh, that Ubuntu put out, and also like many other distributions like Fedora, that's like a really good, you know, way of keeping your software up-to-date and having a stable uh, distribution at the same time. Having these long-term support cycles like you do notice this like you, you start off using them thinking that they're great because they've got new software but like two years down the line and suddenly you can't do something that your friend can do because you you know they're running later versions of software and so forth and you do tend to get that with LTS now if you are like a, a like a more mundane user like if you only you know use the uh, the web browser maybe an email client office software you know all the basic stuff now, an LTS version of Ubuntu will suit you down to the ground, and I think those are the kind of users that Elementary OS might be targeting uh, towards. So that is definitely to be taken in mind. I feel that this is not just a newbie-friendly distribution, but a newbie-centric distribution, an idea that if you do want to do particularly advanced things with the Linux operating system, I think you probably really want to look elsewhere. Like, this is, this is just... Put, put it onto your friend's laptop so that they can check their email and not worry about viruses and then move on with your life. I think this is the kind of uh, distribution that we're looking at here. A distribution that is definitely has a place within the Linux community. Um, but again, like if I, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking for latest greatest software um, and I'm also looking for like customizability as well, which Pantheon doesn't uh, doesn't do so much here. And again, that's by design. If you've got new users that don't really know where everything is. Um, you don't want them, you know, moving around your panels and whatnot by accident. One thing I really did like about the Pantheon OS, though, was the notifications. The fact that those notifications stack and you just get a little notification uh, letting you know that there is a notification. You get a little, like, um, icon change, you know, a little dot on the bell that you know that there's a new notification. You click on that and you get your list of notifications. I think that's really good. I can't wait. I'm sure other desktop environments will pick that, steal that idea over time and pick it up. Uh, I really would quite like that. The sort of the mobile kind of interface of notifications. I'd, I'd, um, 
I feel that would really help my workflow there as well. Now this does appear to be quite heavily based on GTK3 and GNOME and I did notice my laptop's fans spinning up a touch more than in other distributions. Um, GTK3 just does, it does seem to just, just require just a bit more oomph than XFCE or Mate or anything like that. So, you know, like, the, like, like I say GTK3, I'm talking more like, well, Pantheon, GNOME, Budgie to a degree, but Budgie didn't seem to spin up that much. But um, because this is an entry level laptop, I would definitely, you know, if I was looking at a uh, a, a single distribution that that wasn't being tested, I would look at something that would run XFC or Mate because that definitely seems to be easier on the processor in terms of that regard. But Elementary again, not built specifically for lightweight laptops either. It's probably built for laptops about as fast as this, or maybe a little, maybe a touch faster as well there's no performance issues like it's not slow it's as fast as it you would expect it to be it's just again when, when you do anything that involves um it, it basically it means there's a lower threshold before the fans start spinning up again a bit more so um particularly with me if you do recording and so forth that can be a little bit of an issue it gets stuck into the mic Another thing, ooh, <clears throat> another thing I did enjoy about this distribution was the app center so it's not as comprehensive and as intuitive as, say, the Ubuntu Mate boutique, which I think is uh, fantastic. But it's straightforward, it's minimalist, no one's going to get lost in that app centre. They call it an app centre as well, which I think is a good move. It's the kind of language nomenclature that people would expect when moving across from Windows or, or Mac OS. Um, and it was easy enough to, to click around. I hope that they build on that. I hope they expand it. I'd like to see comments and ratings and stuff like that. I know that the comments and rating systems do typically tend to be flawed, but um, they're also quite good at like being able to tell when something's terrible. You know, like they, they get the extremes right. Like if a software piece of software works or doesn't work, it'll either get a five star review or a zero star review, but at least you can glean some degree of information from that. Maybe they should just have a thumbs up, thumbs down like they do in YouTube. Does it work? Does it not? Or, or what have you. But yeah, um, and I also like that they're, they've got mechanisms for charging for software as well. That's something I feel that the Linux community has been deeply missing, is an ability to sell software on Linux and develop software on Linux, specifically specifically for Linux, if that makes any sense. Like, to design specific Linux software for specific Linux users on specific Linux distributions, there doesn't seem to be too much of an avenue down there. Now, I think that Valve and Steam have done a great job with... Um, with Steam, because that is the closest thing to a universal package uh, solution that we've got right now that's actually in use and being used by maybe millions of people. The so, um, so I thought that was a bit of a you know a bit on a, on a bit of a tangent. I thought that's a bit of a strange you know like you could you know Valve have this piece of they've developed this piece of software they developed Steam that can run on a really quite a significant number of Linux distributions, uh, and I've never really had a serious problem with trying to install Steam and and the games have generally worked and generally have been quite consistent and all that kind of stuff. Um, that I'm surprised that more developers aren't releasing non-game software on Steam because you can do that. There is a section for non-games and there are audio editors and video editors available on Steam for Windows. There there is some Linux non-gaming software available, but not much. So I'm surprised more developers don't do that because if you if you wanted a universal package management solution, that's your closest bet there. I, I mean, I do hope that Snap and App Image and w one of them takes off. I hope that we do get there at some point. But nevertheless, we're not quite there yet. So, um, but Steam is doing pretty well. Other than that, I don't really have too much to say about it. Like, just imagine an Ubuntu LTS with the Pantheon desktop. Uh, on top of that. So it definitely seems to be a distribution where the UI is what defines it. And I guess as someone who's been in Linux now for quite some time and I know where I like my panels and I know how I like my layout, um, this is probably not going to be something that appeals to me or it's, it's probably not going to be something that appeals to any kind of Linux power user. Uh, it's it's definitely a distribution for people that want a uh, an easy way into Linux, who want to install something that doesn't involve too many updates, that doesn't involve maintenance and is stable and you know covers all the bases like that and for all of that i think they've done a good job so that's about it from me today thank you very much as always for watching uh, what i'll do i'll leave a link to my mastodon account down in the description below i've been spending a lot of time on there lately and as far as open source social networks go i 
spend a fair amount of time on there, more so than I do on Twitter and other social networks these days. So if you want to catch up with me, then yeah, link in the description. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.